Hey friends, welcome to my channel, Let's Get Crafting. These are the supplies we're gonna be using for our DIY today. Two buckets from the Dollar Tree and some vinyl cutouts. Now, this idea came to me from Julie Story. She sent me some inspiration that she really wanted to see turned into a craft from the Dollar Tree. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna take those buckets and we are going to spray paint the inside a dark gray and then spray paint the outside a light tan. And now at this point, we're gonna start bringing in that distressing, that wood texture. So we're gonna be dry brushing on two different shades of a light light tan and then we're also on the inside as well going to be doing some galvanized distressing inside of it too. Now I want to say to all my friends who are not Cricut owners yet I don't want you to feel like you're going to miss out on this craft so what we're going to do is there's going to be a printable down below of the stacked up animals so you can always cut them out and trace them on or Mod Podge those on. So you'll have some options to be able to play with it. But I do highly recommend if you could ever save up for one, having a Cricut is so fun because you can just do so many cool things with it. So with that being said, let's get back to our buckets and our projects. So you can see here at this point, I'm now adding in some lighter galvanized shading and I'm just tapping it. And then at this point, I'm now going to take a small brush and go along the edge just to clean it up. Now here I am using my cow, my pig, and my rooster, and I'm just stacking them on top of each other. And I will say that the transfer tape at this point can be a little tricky because the plastic from the trash can, when you spray paint and paint on top of it, it's not fully sealed to that plastic yet. And it could just be because I was being impatient and not letting it dry all the way. But I will say that using the transfer tape was a little bit tricky on this part using my cutouts. But again, being able to cut this out on the Cricut was pretty awesome because it was able to go really quick. And I ended up finding these little animals on their online site. So on one side, you can see that I've got my cow, my chicken, and my rooster. And then on the other side, I have got my star. And you can see as I'm pulling back that transfer tape that it did pull it up a little bit. But it was no worry because I just went back in and touched up that spot where it had a problem. And then for my letters, for my farmhouse letters, I'm going to go ahead and just take those off and just stick them on into the place that I want just because they're so big and bulky. I figured that those would transfer pretty easy. I definitely do like using the transfer tape when I do use the Cricut just because it allows me to be able to get little tiny things on without having to reposition things like they should be. But these larger things, they're really great to be able to just pick it up without the transfer tape and you still get the benefit of using the cutouts. So at this point, I'm now gonna take a very small brush and I'm gonna just go around the bucket, just like from our inspiration buckets that we saw, where there is this shiplap look to it. And I'm just gonna make a nice, thin line a little bit messy because I like that look and I'm just going to go all the way around you could be more meticulous about this if you want to but I really ended up loving how it had a little bit of thicker and thinner lines here and there as I went around now today is my summer DIY spotlight friends I ended up having to change the name of it because I was struggling posting Monday through Friday I really wanted to so what we're going to be doing now is my summer DIY spotlights and I'm posting Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays and I am back after having that whole jaw injury thing happen. My jaw was injured from clenching it too much just from stress and so today my spotlight is April. She is so talented friends. Now I know her channel is a little bit bigger than most that I feature here on my channel but I want to assure you that if you don't know who April is she is definitely someone to go and check out. She is super talented and even just looking at the covers here on her gallery or her channel friends she's so talented. Go check her out and send her some love and let her know that I sent you over. There's her video that is gonna be linked down below in the description box, so just head on down there and click that video link and it'll take you right to her. Now at this point, we need to figure out how to make some handles for our buckets, just like from the inspiration. So I'm taking these garden stakes and a lot of Dollar Trees are still having some of these hanging around just because the whole thing that went down where stores were closed. 
So I've noticed that there's still a lot of spring stuff. So I'm just gonna cut them down to size. I need four of them. And you can see here that I'm kind of using my pliers to measure out the sides so that they're all the same bent length. And then once I've got the sides bent, I'm gonna make sure that they're angled in just a tiny bit, not too much, because I wanted it to have the exact same look as the inspiration. So I'm bending them in, and then at this point, I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna mark where I'm gonna drill some holes. That way, so I don't have to struggle trying to cut through the plastic with a craft knife or anything like that. And now I'm just gonna simply drill right through it. And I'm gonna use my drill by going back and forth just a little bit to widen the hole so that the handle is gonna be able to fit down in there nice and neat. Then once you've got those holes drilled, go ahead and slip in your handle and then you're gonna bend back the metal. Now I will say that these pieces of wire are pretty strong, so make sure you have a good pair of pliers, and once you've got it bent back, you can clamp it down in a place and it doesn't move at all. They're strong, sturdy handles. And now I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and seal the whole bucket, so that way it's all in there, nice and sealed, not having any issues if it gets scratched. The Mod Podge is gonna make it really strong and have a beautiful finished look. If you're enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It means so much to me. And if you're new here to my channel, coming over from April's channel, welcome. My name is Heidi and I love doing DIYs. I do them here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I have so many new fun things to share all throughout the months of July and August. Our next DIY is a super simple one, but it has so much impact being able to style and decorate in your home. We're gonna take these cute little buckets, some greenery, some foam, and some wooden dowels. And we're gonna take that foam and we're gonna cut it down so that it fits nicely inside the bottom of the bucket. And we're gonna do two of these since there's two in a pack. I thought, why not? We'll just make a pair of them. It'll be so cute to style this somewhere in my home for the summer season. Now, the idea behind this was I thought that this greenery kind of looked like a mini version of a fiddly fig. And I thought, how cute to make little tiny fiddly fig trees to display somewhere in your home with a farmhouse twist to it. So here I am, I'm just plucking these off. Now this greenery, again, because of all of the crazy sales that are going on right now where people are just trying to clear out their shelves to prep for newer seasons coming, these greeneries, I ended up picking them up for $1.75. They were originally $13.99. I could not even believe how cheap they were. And so I snagged up a few of them so I can use them here in my craft room. So if you feel comfortable going out, I definitely recommend going out and pick up some greenery like this because I use these all the time in my crafts. So as you can see, I plucked off all of these little stems and then I'm adding some hot glue and I'm just keeping them all at the same length and I'm wrapping them all the way around the wooden dowel. Once everything's been glued on, I'm gonna take some of this cute gingham ribbon that I have on hand and I'm just gonna simply wrap it around. This gingham ribbon, I picked it up from Joann's, but you can find this kind of ribbon all over the place in different craft stores. So I'm just gonna wrap it around and then hot glue that last little bit, snip it off, and then to finish that look, I'm gonna add a little bow up at the top because I think that is just so cute and farmhouse. Then once I've got my bow on, I'm gonna go ahead and add some hot glue onto the foam square that I put inside wiggle it around a little bit and push it down in there. Make sure you're being aware and conscious of the bucket handle where you want it to be. Otherwise it could end up looking kind of funny if you glue it down wrong. And then I'm gonna add some glue at the bottom of my foam square to make sure it stays in there nice and snug. Now this next part can be a little bit tricky, but not really. I just put a whole bunch of hot glue, dropped in some rocks, added more hot glue, dropped in more rocks, and then went around into those little crevices making sure I squirt in a lot of hot glue so everything is glued in there nice and tight. Because you want to be able to flip the bucket upside down without rocks falling out everywhere, so just make sure you hot glue everything down into place.
Now I have one more craft to share, but if you decide to try any of these, please do come over to Instagram, say hi to me, tag me in your projects, let me see what you're up to. I just always love seeing the crafts that you are all doing in your own rooms. For this DIY, we are gonna use some of these cutting mats from the Dollar Tree. There are two in a pack and friends, I love these cutting mats because it gives you the stiffness without it being unable to mold and move around. So these cutting mats are so fantastic to make some really cute home decor stuff if done properly. Now I made some galvanized tin buckets with this a while ago and they were a total success. I was so happy with how they turned out and I have them hanging downstairs in my basement. But today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be making some of these round metal balls that you see a lot in boho farmhouse decor. I even see it in farmhouse decor, a more modern twist to it. I just love them. I think they're so cool and I figured out that these cutting mats are perfect for it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our first straight line and then we're gonna just continue to make lines going all the way across. Now I'm doing about a, I'm gonna say a little bit over a half an inch, not too, not too wide, you don't want it to be too wide. So well, let's just say like a half an inch and you can just kind of play with that as the thickness as you want. But once I've got one cut out, I'm just gonna use it as my template to make all the rest. And you can see here that I'm just making a whole bunch of lines using a Sharpie marker because that does not matter. We're gonna paint this black at the end. Now you're gonna go ahead and take your scissors and you're gonna cut them all apart so you have a whole bunch of strips. And once you've got all your strips, I decided to switch over to this purple mat so that you could see it better just because I have a white table. And then you're going to go ahead and start playing around with the thickness and the size of the ball that you would like. Once you figure out the thickness that you want, go ahead and start using your staple to go ahead and staple it all together. Now this is the cool part about this is that all you need is basically the cutting mat and a staple and I'm gonna make a large ball and a smaller ball for the cost of 50 cents now these home decor pieces can run anywhere between 15 to 30 dollars depending on the size of them and I'm gonna make two of them for 50 cents because I'm not using both of the mats I'm using one mat to make a large and a small ball so for the larger ball you can see here that I'm taking two of the strips and I'm gonna just make sure I staple them on both sides. You wanna make sure everything's laying as smooth and flat as possible because if it's not, it's gonna cause some bunching. So once you've got the first circle done, you're gonna go ahead and start the second and I just used it to measure around to make sure everything was the same size. And then you're gonna need to create a few of these. So you can see here that I've got three and I'm just positioning how I want them to be. I'm stapling them in place. And I will say that as you go further and further and the more you keep adding on to it, it can be a little bit trickier to staple it. But don't be afraid of this project because if it does have an issue, you just pull the staple back out. If it gets a little crimped and it doesn't go all the way through, and then you can just keep repositioning it until you get a nice clean punch all the way through and it's nice and in place. So you can see here that I had a little bit of an issue with that and it was just playing with it until I got the motion of it. And then it's funny because the first one that I did, I struggled a little bit more, but by the second one, I felt like I had learned what I was doing and I was really jamming through the smaller one. It was much easier for me to make it. So once you've got those three crossing circles, the sphere, you're now going to take a long one and you're going to go around the middle part just like I'm doing here to connect it all together. And at this point, it's ready to be taken outside. You can spray paint it whatever color you want. You could do silver and do a galvanized look to it, but I decided to go with black because like I said, I just love that modern farmhouse look for this particular project. Now for the smaller ones, I'm gonna take those original existing strips and I'm actually gonna cut them in half. So now they're more of a fourth of an inch thick and I'm going to add on my circles. We're gonna repeat the same exact process. Now you can put as many circle loops as you would like to create your circle. I decided on this one to do four because I thought that that would look really nice being that it's smaller and I wanted to have more detail to it. But once you basically have gotten them all the way around and stapled, 
You're then gonna take your outer strip, just like we did on the big one, and we're gonna staple that into place. So just make sure you take your time, make it look as straight as you possibly can, sneak your staple in there wherever you can, and then just tighten it, and when you're done, take them outside and spray paint them, and you can display them in your home, super cute. Friends, I hope you enjoyed these projects today. Don't forget to go and check out April. Leave a comment down below to let me know what you think, if you'll try any of these and which one was your favorite. And until the next episode, bye friends.